Hi everyone, this is Celine from Elucidate. Today we're going to be talking about the quadratic equation and the discriminant. In order to understand this, we'll be looking at the following question. The discriminant can be used to determine the number of times a line will cross the x-axis. How does this relate to the quadratic equation? And we have a number of functions below. In order to answer this question, we must first understand what the discriminant is. So, for a quadratic equation, a x squared plus b x plus c Our discriminant will follow the following formula. We usually represent it with the symbol delta, which looks like a triangle. b squared minus 4ac. You might recognize this because it's present in the quadratic equation, usually under the square root. Now, the value of the discriminant implies the number of solutions where the function is equal to zero. In other words, the discriminant tells us how many times the function will cross the x-axis. There are three possible ways in which this occurs. The first is if the discriminant is greater than zero. If the discriminant is greater than zero, this means that there are two solutions. And this means that in the context of the parabola, the parabola will cross the x-axis at two distinct points. It might look a little bit like this. And you can see here that the parabola crosses the x-axis here and here at one, two points. And those are your two solutions. If your discriminant is equal to zero, this means that your parabola will have one solution. And can you guess what that means in terms of the parabola? That means that your parabola will touch the x-axis one time. Finally, if your discriminant is less than zero, this means that you will have zero solutions. And in terms of your graph, this means that your parabola won't touch the x-axis at all might look a little bit like this. Can you see how that doesn't touch the x-axis there? So just to summarize the steps that we take in order to calculate the discriminant. So for the first step, we will write the function in the form of a x squared plus b x plus c, if it isn't yet in that form. Following this, we will identify the values of a, b and c from the function. Then we will conclude the number of solutions to fx equals zero by identifying whether the discriminant is greater than zero, in which case there will be two distinct solutions, whether it is equal to zero, where there will be one solution, or whether it's less than zero, in which case there will be no real solutions. Let's now apply this to an example. So the first example we will be looking at looks at the function fx is equal to x squared plus x take 6. Now as written here, it's already in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Thus, recalling the discriminant formula from earlier, delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac we know that a is equal to 1, b is also equal to 1, 
and c is equal to negative 6. And thus, we can substitute these values into the formula. So delta is equal to 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 6. And we can then expand this. So the discriminant is equal to 1 minus minus 24. And thus, it is equal to 25. Now, do you remember what I said about the number of solutions and the positive or negative quality of the discriminant? So, since 25 is positive, 25 is greater than zero, this means that our graph will have two solutions. And that means that it will touch the x-axis twice. Hence, our answer to this question is that since the discriminant is greater than zero, there are two distinct solutions to the function x squared plus x minus six. So as you can see, when we plot this graph, the parabola clearly touches the x-axis at two distinct points. So for this example, we're going to be looking at the equation fx is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 4. Now, since this equation is already in the correct form, we don't have to do anything. Recall from earlier that I said that the form in order to work out the discriminant is fx equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, in this example, we can clearly see that this lines up very well. So a is equal to 1. Here, b is equal to negative 4. And c is equal to 4. Now that we have these values, we can substitute them into the formula for the discriminant. So delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac. Now since b is equal to negative 4, a is equal to 1, and c is equal to 4, we can then substitute these in. And we can then expand this. So in this example, the discriminant is equal to zero. Do you remember how many solutions there are if the discriminant is equal to zero? That's right. If the discriminant is equal to zero, there is one real solution. If we plot it on a graph, it will look like this. And you can clearly see that the parabola touches the x-axis at one distinct point. So for this example, we're going to be looking at the equation fx is equal to x squared plus 5. Now, just solving this equation straight up, we can actually find that there's no solution to this equation. This is because If we rearrange this, we get x squared is equal to negative 5, which would then be equal to x squared is equal to the square root of negative 5, which doesn't exist. You'd have an imaginary solution. But we can actually demonstrate this using the discriminant formula too. So the first thing we're going to do is substitute it into the discriminant formula. We have a is equal to 1. We don't have a b, so b is equal to 0. And c is equal to 5. Now remembering the formula from before, delta is equal to b squared take away 4ac. And we can substitute them in. 
0 squared, take away 4, times 1, times 5. And hence, we get negative 20. Now since the discriminant is less than 0, that means that there are no real solutions. If we plot this on a graph, you can clearly see that the parabola doesn't touch the x-axis at all. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a better understanding of the relationship between quadratic equations, discriminants, and the number of solutions. If you want to learn more about this, click here. And if you want to support Elucidate, click here. See you next time.